All right, this is one that I get asked all the time. How do you create an AI influencer or train a stable diffusion or flux LoRa model if you only have one image of the person? It's actually not that difficult, and I'll show you how to do it with two different tools here at Pixel Dojo. So to get started, we're going to jump into Pixel Studio. This is the brand new user interface that I've created that makes all of this stuff really easy to accomplish. We're going to go ahead and collapse the main menu. And then you can just start typing a prompt over here. So for this, we could say, basically describe the influencer that we want to create. So we'll just say, hey, a photo of a beautiful woman with orange hair. And we're going to go ahead and select Flux Pro 1.1 for this. And we'll crank it up to four images. And in just a few seconds, we have all of our images. And you can see down here in the history. So we can go ahead and select one of these that we like. Let's say this one, for example, is a nice kind of striking photo. So we'll take this one and we'll select it and we'll just go ahead and save it to my images or my media gallery. We can also, in addition to that, we can download it to our own computer here. And if you wanted to, you could use some of the other tools to create variations. You can even create a video using the image that you created here as well. We're not going to do any of that, though. We're going to jump down into the training tab. So for that, we're going to open up the menu and you can see there's this training button over here and we're going to go to the Flux Model Trainer. Now, the Flux Model Trainer, there's a tutorial video that you can watch on this, but we're going to cover all of the things that you need to know right here. You've got three different options. You can either do a zip file upload of a bunch of images. You can upload multiple images just using the drag and drop user interface, or you can do this single image option. And that's what we're going to do right here. So here you can go ahead and click to upload an image, and we'll just go ahead and grab that image that we just generated in the other tab, and that'll show up right here. Now, what's really cool about Pixel Dojo is from this single image, you can click on Generate Images. And what it's going to do is it's going to take this image, it's going to run it through a bunch of different pose control nets. So it's going to show different poses, different angles of the person. And then it's also going to do something called image relighting. So it's going to take each of those images and then relight them after the fact so that they look like they're in different lighting conditions, different backgrounds. And what that's going to do is that's going to give us a complete training set of data, the complete training set of images that we need in order to train a high quality flux. Now, this takes just a minute to complete. We've also got this exact same tool for SDXL if you wanted to do a Stable Diffusion XL model instead of Flux Dev. There we go. It takes maybe two or three minutes to complete this entire process, but here's what you end up getting back. So you can see the relit images and then multiple different poses of the same person, and then each of those relit in a different environment as well. So now we started off, we just had the single image, and now we've got 10 images which is more than enough to put in as training data for a Flux LoRa. So now we'll go ahead and click on Continue to Training. It's going to zip the images up and add them to the zip uploader for us. Now all we have to do is create a trigger word, something that's really memorable and also highly unique for our Flux LoRa. So we'll go ahead and keep the first part talk, and we'll say O-R-N-G-E-H-R-S-N-G-L-I-M-G. -E so talk orange hair, single image, but it's a really unique way of saying it. Caption prefix, we're not going to put anything here. I'm going to leave person selected for training type. I'm going to leave off the auto captioning. And then we're going to go ahead and go up to, I'd say 3000 steps for this one. And we'll just click on start training. Now, once you've clicked start training, it takes just a second, zips everything up, sends it up to the uploader. And you can see training has started. Now, we can go ahead and leave this page. Training's happening in the background. This is all going to happen without us having to sit here and babysit it. So we'll go ahead and leave this page, and I'll show you the second technique while this Laura is training. So for the second technique, we're going to jump back over to Pixel Studio. And what we're going to do is we're going to select Flux Pro 1.1 Ultra for the model. Now, Flux Pro 1.1 Ultra differs because it generates 4 megapixel images. So 2048 by 2048 images instead of typically 1 to 2 megapixel images that you get out of Stable Diffusion or Flux, generally speaking. 
So for this, we're going to switch things up just a little bit in the prompt. So instead of the a photo of a beautiful woman with orange hair, we're going to say a three by three grid image photo of a beautiful woman with orange hair in multiple poses. What this is going to do ideally is create a grid of multiple photos of the same person in different poses. It's going to somewhat mimic what we just did over on the other part of the site with the Flux Laura trainer. So we're going to go ahead and select four images and click on generate. And then we'll just wait just a second for that to come back. And here our images came back. You can see it didn't quite do a three by three grid. So maybe we'll do this one one more time. It did sort of three images side by side. Let's try this with a square aspect ratio. And then we'll say portrait photo. Crank that back up to four images and let's give that a second shot. There we go, and now we've got our new images back. You can see some of these worked out beautifully. So we'll take a look at this first one. There we go, we've actually, we've got nine images of the same person. You can see the character consistency throughout this is perfect. This is something that I noticed early on with Flux Ultra is it's able to do really consistent characters throughout these grid images. Take a look at this one, six images of the second person. And this one, there's less variation, I think, between these and there is it from that first image. Another one, this one it did three side by side, not quite what we're looking for. And then this one's four, but they're all quite varied. Again, really good character consistency. So I would say we could either select this first one or this other one that we, we took a look at a couple images ago. I'm gonna go with this one just because there's nine instead of four images. And so we're going to go ahead and select this one, click Save. And then we're also going to download this one as well. Perfect. Now we're going to jump back over to the Laura Trainer again. Same page that we were on before. But instead of selecting single image, a little bit less intuitive, we're going to select multiple images. And what we're going to do here is we're just going to find that one grid image that we just generated. And we're going to upload that. So you can see that's the only image in the entire data set. And we're just going to click continue to training. We're going to go through the same process. And we're going to create our token word. And we're going to say toke grid image orange hair. Go ahead and keep that. Keep person auto captioning off. Exact same setup. We're going to go with a bit fewer steps. I'm going to go with 2000 steps. Just want to compare and contrast the two. We're going to click on start training and that's going to kick off our Laura training again. Now, all we have left to do is wait a few minutes for this to complete. And when it's done, our models should show up in the My Custom Models page. They don't have thumbnails yet, but that's okay. We're gonna upload one here in a bit. So we've got the 3000 step one on the left and the 2000 step one on the right. So we'll go ahead and say, this is our grid image. So we'll go ahead and save that one. And then we've got our one on the left here, and this is our single image just so we can keep them apart when we go back into Pixel Studio. So now we'll load this up, we'll go back to Pixel Studio. And the really cool thing is, you can see it just keeps where you were before. It seeps all of your history and everything else. So it's nice to be able to just jump right back in where you were before. But what we're gonna do is in the image creator, we're gonna select My Laura's and you can see we've got our grid image and our single image here. So we'll go ahead and select, let's go with the grid image first. We'll select that Laura to begin with. And you can see it automatically adds your token word up here to the prompt box. So now we're gonna go ahead and delete the rest of this. And we'll just say, let's say a portrait photo. And then we'll say sitting in a cafe. We'll crank up the number of images to four and we're using Flux Dev Laura, as you can see down here in the model selection. We're leaving everything else as it is. You can see the grid image is the selected Laura and the strength is the default 0.8. We'll go ahead and just generate four images and see what we get back right off the bat. And we've already got back our first four images. We can take a look at these. And these are pretty fantastic, especially considering we train these with a single grid image, a three by three grid. So not bad at all. So we can take one of these images and we can select the ones that we want to keep. Obviously, we can just go ahead and save these to my media. You can use these in social media right away or whatever else you want to do. It's a great way to get started. Now, 
Let's take a look at the second LoRa that we generated and see the quality of that one. For that, we're gonna do a very similar thing here. We're gonna delete the token word here. And we're gonna go to my LoRa's and we're just gonna select the other one. So this is the single image. You can see that it's loaded here. And now we're just gonna modify our prompt slightly. And same thing as before, we're just gonna generate four images, not gonna tweak anything else. All right, and here we've got our four images back from the single image, Laura. And you can see these are pretty spot on as well. I think these might be a little bit better than the grid image that we trained the other Laura on. But again, both of these are completely viable ways to get a really high quality Laura that you can generate a bunch of different images in different situations with. Now, I do wanna show you one more thing, not just that you can create these LoRa's here and that you can train these models with a single image and build something that's really compelling, but some of the other tools that are built in that are just gonna help you out even more. So if you'll notice over here on the main menu, there's this character section. We have a couple of different things. You can do pose control, character stylist. Character stylist is cool if you wanna change the style of something to, let's say, from photorealistic to anime or oil painting, something along those lines. But we've also got something called pose control. And pose control is really cool because we have these built-in pose library poses that you can select from. So it's a lot to say, but when you select these, you can see over here on the right-hand corner, there are around 40 different poses that you can select from. Anything from you know sitting on a bed taking a selfie to sitting on some stairs, dancing, all sorts of different poses. So we'll go ahead and select one of these. And then this also supports LoRa's. So you can go over to my LoRa's and we'll just go ahead and select the single image LoRa again. You can see that just like before, it's gone ahead and added that token word to the prompt. So we're gonna say a portrait photo of, and then we'll say taking a selfie on a bed. There we go, and just like that, you've got complete pose control over your character. Now you can see that this uses a depth map over here on the right, and that's because I've gone ahead and paired up all of these different standard poses with their perspective depth maps. But you don't have to upload a depth map. If you don't have one, you can just upload a standard image, and it's gonna follow that pose as closely as possible. So this not only gets you the ability to create your character, but also, to style them in different poses, different lighting conditions, and different environments with ease. At the end, you can go ahead and either download or save this. You can go back to your My Media Gallery over here, and you can see that you can create folders, you can keep everything organized. You can even sit here and create some of these that you wanna take public. You can click this button, and this will go ahead and make them public so that others can come to your private gallery and see these right here on Pixel Dojo. Otherwise, you can upload them to social media, do whatever you want with them. You have complete creative control and freedom here. All the tools are in one place, which I think is pretty cool. So let me know if you have any questions or comments down below. Otherwise, let me know what you'd like to see next. We'll check you next time. Thank you so much.